In the Canadian underworld, a race for supremacy begins in which the most ruthless will win. Two of the most powerful and notorious motorcycle clubs in the world, the Outlaws and the Hells Angels, wage war over Montreal. A battle rages on for close to 10 years, culminating in the loss of 62 lives and instilling fear and terror in the hearts of Canadians. The Outlaws, known for their brutal tactics and ruthlessness, have their sights set on the Satan's Choice Motorcycle Club, a formidable Canadian club that has been around for over a decade. The Outlaws, an American club, see an opportunity to expand their empire into Canada and decide to absorb the Satan's Choice MC into their club. Meanwhile, the Hells Angels have their eyes on an even bigger prize. The Popeye Moto Club has been on their radar for years. The Hells Angels are determined to take over the club and extend their influence across the country. Finally, in December of 1977, the Hells Angels achieve their goal and officially take over the Popeye Moto Club. It's a big victory for the Angels and a clear sign that they are a force to be reckoned with in the Canadian biker scene. The first Canadian biker war begins to escalate in February of 1978 when the Outlaws establish their second Quebec chapter by taking over the Montreal Rockers MC. The Hells Angels are not going to let this challenge go unanswered. On a February night in 1978, a Hells Angels member named Yves Apache Trudeau, a man who will go down in the Hells Angels Hall of Fame, makes his move. He approaches a group of Outlaws members and without warning, pulls out a gun and opens fire. One member is killed instantly, and another is critically injured. This brutal act of violence marks the beginning of a full-blown war between the two groups in the province. But the Hells Angels do not hesitate to use even more drastic means. Before the outlaws can fight back, the Hells Angels attack again, this time directly the leader of the gang. The Angels plant a bomb under his car, with little regard for innocent bystanders who may be caught in the crossfire. The outlaws are hit hard, their leader is dead, and his closest confidants are injured. The gang is in shock, and at first cannot seem to defend themselves against the ferocity of the opposing Hell's Angels, especially when they are attacked on three consecutive days in April 1978. On the first day, they storm the outlaw clubhouse, injuring several members. The violence continues on the second day, with another outlaw member being brutally murdered. On the third day, a Hell's Angel opens fire on an outlaw and his girlfriend at a local bar, leaving them both critically injured. The city is in a state of shock, and people are starting to fear for their safety. The outlaws manage to launch a small counterattack, shooting a Hell's Angel during a drive-by shooting. However, this is only the beginning. The Hell's Angels have earned great respect and caused a stir with their brutal takeover of the Canadian underworld. Smaller motorcycle clubs like the Wild Ones MC decide to join forces with them, and Walter Stadnick, the leader of the Wild Ones at the time, arranges a meeting with Hell's Angels leader Yves Buteau to discuss a patchover. Unbeknownst to them, the outlaws are watching the meeting closely. The diplomatic meeting between allies ends in a bloody event known today as the Le Tourbillon Massacre. In a cafe, the Hell's Angels and the Wild Ones strategize the potential alliance until chaos erupts. Two outlaws, equipped with a sawn-off shotgun and a pistol, start blasting bullets at the opposing bikers. The unsuspecting bikers in the cafe are not able to defend themselves. The once peaceful cafe now resembles a bloodbath, with bullet-riddled walls and blood-stained floors. Two members of the Wild Ones MC and one Hell's Angel are dead, several others injured. Amid the carnage, Walter Stadnick manages to evade the gunmen by hiding under a table. The outlaws have now scored their first real counterattack. The Torbillion Massacre is a painful stab at the supremacy of the Hells Angels. The Hells Angel bosses then set their number one assassin, Eve Apache Trudeau, to track down and kill the person who ordered this massacre. But the outlaws continue their counterattacks in the meantime. They simply cannot allow a union of Wild Ones and Hells Angels. They therefore focus on the smaller Wild Ones MC and make it their main goal to eliminate this small but vital biker club. The Wild Ones are not able to defend themselves against the superior outlaws who kill one biker after the other, no matter if with firearms or bombs. 
When Walter Stadnick then one day returns to the hometown of the Wild Ones, he no longer finds a club. The Wild Ones are history, and Stadnick stands alone. He therefore joins the Hell's Angel on his own and comes to play a leading role in the future. Currently, one Hell's Angel is particularly outstanding in ensuring that the Hell's Angels remain in control. Eve's Apache Trudeau shoots the former boss of the Outlaws and then also gets the man behind the Torbillion Massacre, Roland Du Temple. Trudeau places a bomb under Du Temple's car and blows it up when he gets in. He then kills another outlaw in cold blood on the street. Trudeau by himself is a force to be reckoned with. His influence on the battle between Hell's Angels and Outlaws is crucial. Together with Yves Le Boss Bouteau and another Hell's Angel, he even kills an outlaw and his girlfriend by blowing up his motorcycle. This particularly unruly group around Trudeau is granted authorization by the Montreal chapter to establish the Montreal North chapter based in Laval. It's predominantly composed of former Popeyes known for their violent and drug-fueled conduct, a pivotal decision. In contrast, the Montreal South chapter, led by Réjean Zig Zig Lessard, consists of more disciplined members who joined after 1977. The North chapter's notoriety for their reckless behavior and violent tendencies ultimately culminated in a massive inner conflict. Yves Trudeau was even forced to kill a member of his own chapter as he was heavily drug addicted and had conspired to kidnap the kids of one of the Hell's Angels cocaine dealers. The fight against the outlaws finally costs the life of Yves Buteau, the current president of the Canadian Hell's Angels. After a visit to a cafe, he smokes a cigarette with a fellow member. Then he is hit by the bullets of a 38 caliber pistol. The gunman is Gino Goudreau, an outlaw prospect who wants to finally earn full member status by murdering a Hells Angel. Over 2,000 supporters and 150 Hells Angels from Canada, the United States, England and other locations join the funeral ride of Yves Buteau, which covers a distance of approximately 40 miles from Sorel to Drummondville, where Buteau is laid to rest. The day after the funeral, a young boy makes a shocking discovery. A bomb has been planted on the route taken by the procession, posing a grave threat to the Hells Angels riders. Police surmise that the bomb has been placed and disguised under cover of darkness on the night before the funeral, in what appears to be a targeted attempt on the lives of the bikers. In the world of criminal biker gangs, not even a funeral is sacred. However, the seemingly heaviest blow against the Hells Angels, the murder of the leader, does not lead to the hoped-for effect. In 1984, the Hells Angels go on the rampage again. Car bombs, drive-by shootings, and suddenly untraceable outlaw members. With calculated precision, the Hells Angels delivered devastating blows to the outlaws, causing them to retreat from Montreal in defeat. The outlaws are forced to regroup in Ontario, where they can maintain their stronghold, but the Hells Angels have demonstrated their overwhelming power and dominance in the region. Despite the efforts of law enforcement, the Hells Angels continue to operate with impunity, and their influence remains a significant force in the Canadian underworld. The first Canadian biker war has come to a close, but it has only served to solidify the Hells Angels' reputation as one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the country.